Excellency, the Governor of Ondo State, um, my one-time ministerial colleague, but he's now an Iroko tree. I guess. <laughs> uh, my sister, the Deputy Governor, the publisher, my brother Tunde Lemo, uh, who has joined us in the ranks of the unemployed <laughs> just recently. <laughs> My Egon, Pastor Bakari, and Mrs. B, Professor Pius Ades and me, who always, consistently, without fail, delivers very insightful and thought-provoking speeches. I don't know how he does it. Uh, I'll be encouraging one of my sons to study French in University of Illore hoping that he might end up like Pius, but I guess it's just wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Banks, Papa, Ayo Ade Banjo, ladies and gentlemen, I recognize you all. I've been taken a little bit by surprise by being asked to speak, so I'll be very brief. I'll tell a story like Fola did, and best way to escape from making a speech is to tell a story. <laughs> I have two or three stories about Pastor Tinde Bakari. But let me begin with the end. Um, I met Pastor about five years ago, but it is as if I've known him all my 54 years. He has been such a major positive influence on my life that I cannot imagine how I managed to live up to the age of 50 before meeting him. Mm. We have struggled together. We have fought and felt pain about our country together. But more importantly for me, he has been an inspirational leader. So I connect completely with the description of the pastor by Professor Pius Adesani. Pastor Bakari is a true leader of distinction. Mm -hmm. and, and though, though my brother, Governor Mimiko, said it in jest, because pastor will never contest under the platform of the PDP. <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope that the Almighty God has heard his prayers that one day Pastor Bakari be the president of this country. Because if and when that happens, true leadership, justice, equity, and progress will come to this land. So let me quickly tell my two stories. First, a bit about myself. I've never borrowed in my life. I don't borrow. If I can't afford something, I just wait until I can afford it. I've never borrowed. My company has borrowed once, and we found that we ended up working for the bank. <laughs> so we decided we'll never borrow. Okay? It's, the, it's not a good way to grow a business. That's why our business is small, but it pays our bills. Um, but in 2000 and, was it 2012, Jimmy, or in 2011, uh, my worst month came. My worst month is September. Um, many of the faces here know what I mean. September is the school fees month. And if you have 12 children, uh, you know what that means. That September 2011 came. I did all I can. As you know, I don't borrow. But suddenly I found that I couldn't pay school fees. The only person that I could confide in was Jimmy, who, 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 after retiring as a banker, became a certified amiibo. <laughs> <laughs> Went and told Pastor Bakari. So, Pastor Bakari is the only person that has ever lent me money. Oh, no. 
saying this because uh, of the way Amana he lent me the money. He didn't. Uh, he didn't ask me whether once he established through Jimmy that I needed the money. It was for school fees. He just got my account number and where the money. And thrice I asked to return the money, and thrice he refused by ensuring I don't have his account number. Wow. <laughs> so I want you all to please thank Pastor for me. This story about Rolls Royce. I now know that uh, I'm not a very lucky man. <laughs> because you know, once the Rolls Royce came, there was hope that the private jet would also come. <laughs> but the uh, pastor has spoiled my. <laughs> my second pastor Bakari story is one that I, not many people know because it happened between just three or four of us. Uh, on the 14th of January 2011, uh, Pastor Bakari called me and said, Look, we must save this country. You should run for office. You should run for president. Let's go to Labour Party and get the ticket. Mimiko is my brother. Everything will be done. I said, Pastor, I'm not doing. I have uh, worked for eight years in the federal government and I know what I got in return. I got accusations exile, uh, threats, arrest. Uh, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not thinking about public service. I'm too angry, I'm too bitter. And he said, okay, I'll continue to pray for you to be less angry and less bitter. <laughs> <laughs> so, pastor said, well, you know, I, I had raised some money for us to do this politics. Now, we should go back and buy a nice car and take a long vacation. And I said to him, Pastor, 24 hours is a long time in politics. Tomorrow, 15th of January, is the last day for the emergence of candidates for the presidency of Nigeria. Let's wait until the end of tomorrow. And we left Lagos. I went back to Kaduna. And around 2 p.m. on the 15th of January, I was at home. It's Remembrance Day. I usually stay in. I got a call from Pastor Bakari. Eh, Madam, I said, yes, Pastor. He said, you know, I just got a call from Jared Buhari. I said, how is the general? He said, oh, he's fine, he's fine, he's fine. <laughs> no, he's not fine. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, I said, oh dear, I mean, when the person is 60-something and he's not fine, you, you imagine the worst scenario. He's not fine. I said, what's wrong with him? He said, he just asked me to be his running mate. And I said, no. I said, you, you said no? He said, yes. I said, but what did the general say? He said, the general said, Pastor, don't say no. Think about it for a few hours and get back to me. I said, oh. So you were trying to push me to run for president? <laughs> A labor party, of all parties, you want our labor. Rejecting the opportunity, I said, Pastor, you, you have to say yes. He said, no, I'm not a politician. I'm a preacher. I've never even worked in government. I said, uh, Pastor, no one was born to work in government. We all end up there, one way or the other. I said, you, I said, you have to say yes. He said, well, I'm consulting. I have to talk to people, and I thought I should talk to you. I said, you have to say yes. He didn't speak to me for three days. Wow. <laughs> then he flew to Kaduna, came to my house, and uh, he said to me, um, I want us to go and see General so that I give him my decision. And I said, well, what is your decision? <laughs> he said, uh, I can't do this. I said, Pastor. He said, yes. He said, let's pray. That is your profession, isn't it? <laughs> I was waiting for 
pastor to be 60 to tell this story. <laughs> this story no one has, no one knows except a snippet in my book. Now you're getting the full thing. <laughs> so we all knelt down and pastor led us in prayer. <laughs> when we finished praying, I noticed that pastor was weeping. Wow. I said, why are you weeping? Problems of this country, I said, that's where you'll go and help solve them. <laughs> your, your tears are a sign from God that you must do this. <laughs> Let's go to general and tell him we are doing it. <laughs> he said, okay. Okay. These tears, I don't know how they came, but if I'm going to go ahead with this, I have one condition. He said, what? You must come with me. Now, that was a tough one. <laughs> because I was, you know, I, I had returned from exile and I was battling with the government. They had a court case against me, criminal case. I had five court cases against them and I decided that until I settled all those cases, I wasn't going to join any political party. And here is Pastor blackmailing me, literally. <laughs> Can you imagine a man of God doing that? <laughs> so, and there was also a second problem. At that time, General Buhari and I are not the best of friends. Wow. We had our own issue. Wow. Nasir knows. Wow. This one is a this one, this one is a Buhari fanatic, as you see him like that. <laughs> Looking like a side to <laughs> Okay, if you don't stop laughing, the story will not end. You're making me sound like a comedian. Anyway, so I said to Pastor, because at that time all I wanted was to deliver him to the slaughterhouse of the Buhari. So I said, I agree, well, let's go. So we went, we met with the General, and, uh, and uh, he said to General, I will do it, sir, but we need a team. So I'm not going to come alone, I'm coming with a team. We need a team of people that will do this work. It's not the job of a president and vice president alone. So, but since that day, pastor kept praying that uh, something will happen. He refused to sign the form <laughs> until uh, the very last date. There is another story there. Uh, if you want that story, read my book, President Obasanjo is a key part of it. But anyway, we finally delivered Pastor to the slaughterhouse with his tears and he ran for president. I'm saying this because I have read many comments from people within Christendom and out that attribute any kind of ambition or plan on the part of Pastor Bakari for this. We literally forced him into this and I'm glad we did because now what has happened and you need to know this so that you appeal to him is that he took me into the CPC and he has left me there so there is a small matter that uh, has to be settled I don't know who will settle this but he has taken me there, CPC march into APC, but pastor has abandoned me there. So there is a clear case of abandonment, which, which could have been mitigated if he had sent out Rolls Royce to me. But that has not happened. Since I've made you all laugh, I would like you to join me in saying a very happy birthday to Pastor. Please stand up and let's wish Pastor very happy. Happy birthday, dear Pastor. Happy birthday to you. Mrs. P. Happy birthday to you.